Call the Treasurer. Mr Speaker, I move that the following cognate bills uh, be now introduced. A bill for an act to appropriate out of the consolidated fund sums for the service of the government for the year 1819. A bill for an act to appropriate out of the consolidated fund a sum for the service of the legislature for the year 1819. A bill for an act to provide for the establishment of the new New South Wales Generations Debt Retirement Fund and New South Wales Generations Community Service Facilities Fund for the purpose of providing funding for state debt retirement and certain community purposes. A bill for an act to make miscellaneous amendments to certain state revenue legislation in connection with the budget for the year 2018-19 and for other purposes. And a bill for an act to make provision with respect to the use of proceeds of sale of Snowy Hydro Limited to fund infrastructure to benefit regional New South Wales. Yes. Thank you. The question is that these bills be now introduced. All of the opinions say aye. aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Treasurer. Madam Speaker, I bring up the bill. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I now move that these bills be read a second time. <laughs> Madam Speaker, this is a budget for the people of our great state. The nearly 8 million who call New South Wales home. Our working families, young apprentices and those needing a helping hand. Our new mums, business owners and our Indigenous brothers and sisters. Our citizens of today and the generations to come. Madam Speaker, we are a government that puts people first, and this budget does too. Families like the Mabawalas from Quakers Hill getting a break on their bills. People like Bobby Burke, who planted the Bathurst Community Garden. Indigenous boys like White, looking for hope and help. Children like Angel, welcomed into the loving arms of her adopted family. Survivors like Jose, turning his life around after addiction and despair. Young girls like Bridie, longing to play sport with her friends. And business owners like Paul, wanting to give his staff more hours. These are real people with real stories. And today, I'm going to outline in this budget how this budget, this government, this coalition is making their lives better and their aspirations count. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we believe social outcomes and strong financial management are two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. And that's why we have been bold in making better use of our public resources, keeping expenses on a tight leash and generating surpluses to invest with impact. This is the discipline of a government determined to keep delivering. Today, I announce our surplus for 2017-18 stands at $3.9 billion, with surpluses averaging $1.6 billion projected in each year over the next four years. This better expected result is due to increased investment returns, high GST pool receipts and growth in other revenues like mining royalties. It is also testament to the health of our budget, our strong financial management and our diversified revenue base. Over the past 12 months, Housing cooled more quickly than previously forecast. As a result, transfer duty revenues, 11% of total revenue, will be $1 billion lower than we expected in last year's budget and $5.5 billion lower in the three years to 2021. Despite this, our finances remain in excellent shape because this government has laid the foundations that are built to last. Our AAA credit rating is affirmed, net debt negative for the third year running. Operating expenses per capita are the lowest of the mainland states, as is our debt to GSP. And when it comes to net worth, New South Wales is the first ever quarter of a trillion dollar state, a, a year earlier than predicted. Madam Speaker, the biggest obstacle to our financial security has been an opposition that believes in wealth without work and politics without principle, placing partisan advantage over the public good. History will judge them accordingly. Madam Speaker, asset recycling was the golden key that unlocked the door of opportunity for New South Wales. And that is why today we can announce our infrastructure investment hits another record, $87.2 billion over the next four years. This is the largest in the nation. Madam Speaker, New South Wales today is not great by chance, 
but great by choice. Strong financial management has created a virtuous cycle of growth and return, allowing us to make our record investments where it matters. This is the coalition advantage. The decision we make yield dividend, yields dividends, letting us focus on dual horizons, building for tomorrow and delivering for today. Madam Speaker, we work hard keeping our finances in shape so we can do more today for families who need it. With wage growth slow around the world, many are feeling the strain and we're doing our bit to help. In the past 12 months, we've cut, we've cut the cost of green slips by an average of $124 a year. We've slashed stamp duty, seeing 30,000 first home buyers surge into the market, saving tens of thousands of dollars. Sydney water customers are saving an average $100 off their bill each year. We're helping low income and special need households save up to $285 a year with our energy rebates. And from next month, we'll make car registration free for regular toll users, saving some drivers more than $700 a year. And now, Madam Speaker, we're upping the ante. We're launching a new one-click energy switch website, helping families claim the best energy deals. We're turning Service New South Wales into Savings New South Wales, helping people access all their rebates and concessions. We're making sure parking fines are about fairness, not revenue raising, cutting the top 10 by 25 per cent and calling on local councils to do the same. And we're slashing caravan registration by 40 per cent, delivering savings for up to $471 for families and grey nomads. <coughs> All these initiatives have helped families like the Maver Wireless family from Quakers Hill, with free rego, two active kids vouchers and two CTP refunds, they've saved over $800 so far. <laughs> but our hip pocket savers, Madam Speaker, aren't just about money. Financial freedom removes barriers to opportunity, and that's what we want for every family. Last year, we launched Active Kids, a $100 voucher for every school-aged child to participate in sport. The response has been overwhelming, with more than 390,000 vouchers redeemed since January. One of them is eight-year-old Bridie, who was able to play netball for the very first time. She's now her team's goal shooter and thinking of taking up soccer as well. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we want New South Wales kids to be active and creative as well. So today I can announce a new initiative, Creative Kids, a $100 voucher for every school child to participate in extracurricular activities like music, drama, art, coding yeah. and second language yeah. classes. We know, we know this won't cover all of the costs, but we want to open up a world of opportunity for our kids, giving more parents and more children the encouragement they need to reach their potential. Madam Speaker, this budget delivers today for our young people, giving them a better start in life. We know early learning can set our kids up for success. Last budget, we reduced early learning costs in the year before school for four-year-old kids. This budget goes further. Today I announce we're creating 4,800 new community preschool places in our fastest growing areas like Camden, Parramatta, Blacktown and the Hills. And from 2019, in an Australian first, every three-year-old in New South Wales will have access to subsidised early learning. <laughs> That's part of an almost $200 million investment in our children, saving families on average $825 a year. Madam Speaker, for those preparing for life beyond school, we will help them on that journey, establishing new TAFE connected learning centres and additional mobile training units. We also know that cost can be a barrier to learning new schools and forging a new career. So over the next four years, we will offer 100,000 fee-free apprenticeships, yeah. an army of skilled workers in industries with jobs at the ready. Madam Speaker, the, apprenticeships, the apprentices we train today will build the New South Wales of tomorrow. Yeah. Madam Speaker, this budget delivers more essential public ser services we rely on today and every day. For our schools, we're employing over 880 new teachers, but it's about quality teaching as well. So we're boosting the, the ranks of highly qualified <laughs> teachers and we'll continue to invest in them with $50 million in additional funding for our school leadership strategy. Madam Speaker, in the next year, our healthcare system is getting a billion dollar boost for more frontline yeah, workers. Yeah. 
almost 1,000 more nurses and midwives, 300 more doctors, 120 more allied health professionals, and over 750 paramedics and call staff over the next four years. That's over 2,000 medical professionals for the times when minutes matter and seconds count. Yeah. Madam Speaker, we know that in the fragile early moments of life, it's important mothers and babies get quality care. So we're employing 35 new family health nurses and recruiting 100 midwives. From the most precious moments to the everyday, we want to make <coughs> life easier. So starting next year, every parent of every baby born in our state will have the option of receiving the New South Wales Baby Bundle. An Australian first, it's packed with practical items to give new parents confidence and support. It's a bundle of care for your bundle of joy. And importantly, it's part of our holistic parents package that includes more postnatal home visits, newborn blood spot screening, improved mental health services, and more family care centres in regional New South Wales. Madam Speaker, this budget continues improving our transport network with convenient connections. There's $2.1 billion over the next four years for better infrastructure and more train services. 2,000 additional weekly bus services over the next year in Sydney's east and west. And $281 million in the coming year to fix pinch points that clog up our roads. We're also supporting those keeping our communities safe. There'll be 100 more police on the beat, former defence Blackhawks for the Rural Fire Service, and new vehicles and vessels so the SES can do more when disaster strikes. <coughs> Madam Speaker, we believe our Indigenous communities have so much more to gain and so much more to give when it comes to our shared success. <coughs> Delivering for today means addressing the problems they face. Madam Speaker, I do not claim to speak for the Indigenous community, but when I've met their youth and their leaders, one thing has been made very clear to me. Symbolic gestures and virtue signalling cannot break the cycle of disadvantage. The missing link is not a flag on a bridge. It is economic participation sharing in the opportunities to get ahead. Madam Speaker, one of the biggest barriers to success for our young Indigenous, Indigenous Australians is whether they finish high school. It's a challenge the Clontar Foundation have been working to overcome for 18 years, offering a mix of mentoring, social and health support, and lots and lots of footy. Often these young men have confronting stories, like 18-year-old Wyatt who moved to Moree after losing his mother and grandmother. He says, I arrived an angry young person who thought at the time I was heading to jail, or even worse, end up dead. I might have slipped away if I didn't have help from Quantar. Today Wyatt has a HSC behind him, two jobs, a car and a place of his own. On the weekends, he plays footy for his local Aussie rules team and his local rugby league team. Thanks to Clontarf, that's one young life that didn't slip away. As he now says, I know my mum and my nan would be extremely proud of who I have become. Madam Speaker, we are a government that places substance before symbolism. So this budget provides $3.75 million for an additional 1,000 students to be part of the Clontarf success story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And today we are honoured to be joined by a few representatives of the 1,800 students who attend one of their 26 academies. Clontarf fosters confidence, but confidence also comes from a strong connection to culture. So this year we'll commit $2.8 million to Australia's first ever Aboriginal Languages Trust preserving their language and dialect of our First Peoples. We're also expanding the Youth Curie Court to Surrey Hills. And guided by the insights and expertise of Warren Mundine, $10 million is being set aside for new Indigenous social impact investments to open the door to economic opportunity. Madam Speaker, delivering for today means backing our business community. Farmers or florists, builders or bakers, all are pioneers for prosperity, not just for themselves, but for the thousands of families that they support. When jobs are created, it is because they are creating them. And we believe they deserve a fair go. If we want wages higher, we need taxes lower. 
And that's why, from July 1 this year, we'll forge a path to raise the payroll tax threshold to $1 million. Over the next four years, more than 5,000 businesses are projected to pay no payroll tax at all, saving $881 million in tax over the forward estimates and eliminating around $50 million in administration costs too. This will also see 40,000 businesses saving $5,000 in 2018-19 and over $13,000 by 21-22. Our payroll tax give thousands of businesses room to grow, like Paul and his butcher shop in Macquarie Centre, wanting to lower his overset, overheads so he can employ his staff for longer. This takes the total tax cuts of the last three coalition budgets to $4.4 billion. Dollars the people of New South Wales can now keep for themselves. <laughs> Madam Speaker, this budget delivers more today for those who need it most. Over 18,000 children in New South Wales are in temporary care because their home environment is not safe enough. The best thing that we can do for many of these kids is to give them a stable home. This is something our government is passionate about, and our reforms have already doubled the adoption rate. As Jeremy Samet from the Centre of the Independent Studies wrote last year, when it comes to recognition of the desperate need for adoptions, it's New South Wales first and daylight second. In this budget, we'll provide funding to double the adoption rate again and give 1,000 children a permanent, safe home over the next four years. So children, like eight-year-old Angel and her three adopted siblings can experience the love and care of foster parents like Paul and Timon James. In Paul's own words, from the first time we held any of them, we treated them as our own and knew we would do anything for them. This is the kind of commitment every child deserves. But, Speaker, this budget also delivers more <coughs> for those who are at risk. An additional 100 caseworkers to protect our children. Yeah. More funding to tackle family violence and reduce reoffending. Our largest ever investment in PCYCs, nearly $40 million over the next four years for new and better facilities. $3.2 million in 2018-19 for the commencement of the NDIS and a billion dollar commitment over four years to reduce homelessness. With more housing, better outreach and improved health care. Madam Speaker, this budget is also helping people turn their lives around. People like Jose Portia. In a desperate moment, after the death of his fiancée, Jose made a terrible choice. His decision to use ice led to his life spiralling out of control. Caught in a vicious cycle, an addict willing to commit terrible crimes to feed his addiction. Shot at, jailed, his life was at rock bottom. But after one last brush with the law, Jose entered Adele House, a drug and alcohol facility in Coffs Harbour. What's different about Adele House is the treatment doesn't stop at beating addiction. Over 12 months, the program gives participants the life skills they need. Support, recovery, and most importantly, independence. I recently visited Adele House and witnessed firsthand the incredible work the team there does. I saw men whose lives had been destroyed by drugs reclaiming their dignity and pride. And it was there I met Jose, who today has turned his life around and is now helping men just like him. So this budget provides $5 million for Adele House, matched dollar for dollar by the <coughs> private donors, to construct a new rehab facility, increasing its capacity from 60 to 100 beds and doubling its power to save lives. Jose is here in gallery with us today, as are Adele House directors, Will Morgan and Richard Alloway. I want to acknowledge them and thank them for what they are providing. Hope for a better future and the means to achieve it. Yeah. Madam Speaker, while we are delivering today, we are also building tomorrow. We do not control the levers of population growth in our state, but we do control how we respond. And our response has been to build the social infrastructure on a scale that has never been seen before. Madam Speaker, our schools and hospitals aren't just slogans on a big red bus. Yeah. They are real, yeah. they are real, they are funded, yeah. and they are being built all around yeah. us. Yeah. 40, 40 new up and upgraded hospitals at every point on the compass. We're refurbishing the birth suites and theatres at St George Hospital. In the booming western suburbs of Sydney, a $5.7 billion hospital blitz 
including Campbelltown, Nepean, Blacktown and Mount Druitt. And we're planning for future works at John Hunter, Westmead, Albury, Canterbury, Bankstown, Shoalhaven, Hornsby and Goulburn. A $10 million rural health infrastructure program will also deliver upgrades to Tenterfield, Scone, Gloucester and Dungog. And today I can announce a $740 million investment to transform Liverpool Hospital into a world-leading health and academic precinct. Fantastic. This includes new state-of-the-art neonatal intensive care and maternity facilities and a comprehensive cancer centre. We're also making a, an historic investment to help those battling mental illness. $700 million as part of a new mental health infrastructure program to upgrade acute mental health units better equip emergency departments and build specialist facilities. And we're ensuring medical research stays in New South Wales with $150 million over 10 years for our biggest killer, cardiovascular yeah, yeah, disease. Yeah. Madam Speaker, when it comes to schools, we're breaking our own records. $6 billion to fund more than 170 new and upgraded schools. That's an additional 2,000 new permanent classrooms for thousands of new students. We're building better spaces for our kids to learn in, with $160 million this year to tackle the school maintenance backlog. And we'll have cooler schools, air conditioning for up to 1,000 schools, with a half a billion dollar investment over five years. Yeah. Anything you can do, we can do better. <laughs> uh, uh, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, this government, this government is building a better New South Wales. And this budget ramps up the pace to get the big projects finished faster. There's more than $17 billion to get, on the, to get on with the job of West Connects, North Connects, the Sydney Metro, the Light Rail in Sydney, Newcastle and Parramatta. $1.8 billion to get things moving on the F6 connection, Sydney Gateway, the Western Harbour Tunnel and the Beaches Link. And for the first time, a $3 billion reservation from Restart New South Wales to begin Metro West. Yeah. Today's budget also sets in motion our plans to be, uh, for the Western Sydney Airport with $439 million in the next year to build the connections to make it easy to get to and new funding to build the North-South Rail Line. Out in our regions, a new wave of infrastructure is sweeping the state. $4 billion in Snowy Hydro proceeds will be received with money allocated to plan the first round of projects. There is $1.2 billion for the Pacific Highway upgrades from Coffs Harbour to Ballina and new funding for sealing country roads, fixing country rail and building the new Shoalhaven River Bridge. Yeah. And we've allocated $50 million to invest in our primary industry research stations, boosting productivity in our agricultural sector. Madam Speaker, today we are the custodians of our state's natural wonders and our responsibility is to conserve those for future generations. Soon our government for the first time will issue sustainability bonds to help finance projects that benefit our natural <laughs> environment. We'll create a new green canopy for Greater Sydney, planting 5 million trees by 2030. We'll invest more to preserve and enhance our national parks and nature walks. Allocate $36.8 million to protect endangered koalas and funding for conservation work through the Saving Our Species program and investing $100 million to acquire more open spaces for everyone to enjoy. Madam Speaker, three years ago, the mighty New South Wales Blues walked out to the biggest state of origin crowd in history. The only problem, it was in Melbourne. And that's why, and that's why this budget commits the final funding to complete the Western Sydney Stadium, kickstart the rebuild of the old Sydney Football Stadium, and also improve local sporting facilities, investing $200 million across the state. Yeah. Madam Speaker, great cities have great stadiums, and they also have Thanks. great museums. This budget helps deliver the Member Powerhouse Banks Museum Town. in Western Sydney. More investment in the Regional Cultural Fund to support culture in the bush and it funds a new exhibition hall at the Australian Museum that's fit for a king. Our, say, our city and our state <coughs> are the pride of Australia, and it is our job to invest in them today, not to play politics with their future. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, managing a good budget is only part of the equation. 
but a good government is focused on the economy too. New South Wales today is in the midst of an economic boom, the likes of which we have not seen for decades. We have the fastest growing state economy over the past five years. This growth is only good because it creates new opportunities for our people to contribute and share in our prosperity. New South Wales today boasts the lowest unemployment rate of any state for three years running. In Western Sydney, it's below 5% for the first time since records began. Our participation rate has hit record highs. Youth unemployment is lower than any other state. Regional jobs are booming and women are leading the charge with 60% of new jobs. Today, we are laying the foundations for strong jobs growth to continue for years. And Speaker, we've emerged from our economic challenges and now face the future with confidence. Now, Madam Speaker, before I finish, there is one more thing. Last year, over 90,000 children were born in New South Wales. One of them, my youngest baby girl, Harriet, who's here today. Like every parent, I wonder and I worry about her future, her opportunities, her challenges, the type of world that she will inherit, and what I can do to make a difference. Madam Speaker, we already know the generations ahead won't be easy. That as our population ages, the budget will struggle to keep up. It has been said that a society grows great when its people plant trees in whose shade they know they shall never sit. This means it's up to us to act now, leaving a better state for those to, sorry, to fulfil our fundamental, our most fundamental moral obligation, leaving a better state for those who come after us. Yeah. Madam Speaker, today we launch the New South Wales Generations Fund, a future fund like none other in the world. It will harness the unprecedented strength of our balance sheet to offset debt and insure against a $17 billion fiscal gap forecast by 2056, securing our state's finances today and into the future, and ensuring that our children can weather the storms ahead. To see the fund, we'll make an initial investment of $3 billion. The returns will grow over time, strengthening our state's ability to meet future commitments. But in a world first, up to half of the investment turns will enable the new My Community Dividend program, where communities themselves will decide how that money is spent to make their neighbourhoods healthier, happier and better places to live. Any citizen can submit an idea in their area, and anyone over 16 can vote for their favourite project. Like Bobby Burke's community garden in Bathurst that has brought families and young kids together. The Generations Fund is another innovation from a government that puts people first. Madam Speaker, this is a budget that shows the Conservative heart. The good that government can do when it manages money well. New help for families with the cost of living. Giving our young people the best start in life. More frontline services when we need them. Tax relief for small businesses. A helping hand for those who need it most and record schools, hospitals, road and rail to build our future state. All this delivered on a stable platform of solid services and fiscal discipline. Madam Speaker, seven years ago, this government dared to manage, imagine a brighter future. New ambitions for our state, new aspirations <laughs> for our people. And New South Wales stronger, fairer and more free. That's the future we're fighting for, and we fight for it every single day. But we know, Madam Speaker, that our work is not yet finished. And working together, our best is yet to come. This is a budget building for tomorrow and delivering for today. I commend it to the House. Yeah.